Hello everyone and welcome to our tutorial today with the Putnam County District Library. I'm Addie and today I'm going to give you a little tour of the updated Apple weather app. So that's the weather app that comes on an Apple device like an iPhone or an iPad. I believe the update came about starting in June of 2022 for any Apple device able to download iOS 16 and higher. The new Apple Weather app provides a lot of detail about specific weather data points, such as precipitation, wind, etc., that the old Apple Weather app did not give, and I love it, and I use it all the time now. I didn't actually use the old one very often because I just didn't feel like it was very detailed or super helpful, but since the Apple Weather app got updated, I do use it a lot more. So all iPhones and iPads should come with the Apple Weather app already downloaded on their device. So you shouldn't have to down download anything new to use it. However, if for some reason the Weather app got deleted off your phone or your iPad, you can just re-download it from the App Store. You can just do a search for the Apple Weather app um, and it should allow you to download it back. So I'm excited to outline some of these new features of the Apple Weather app for you. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to open up my weather app. And then I'm gonna click down on the bottom um, of the app screen here. You can see at the bottom right corner, there's three dots with three lines next to it. That's gonna show me all the locations that I have saved um, to see their weather. So at the top, it says weather, search for a city or airport. So I'm just gonna quickly run through how to add a location. This is the same as um, the old weather app, this, this part of it is the same. So I'm just gonna type, click in the box there and I'm gonna type Ottawa, I'll just add Ottawa. And then there's Ottawa, Ohio, the fourth one down. I click on it, it shows me Ottawa's weather currently and then I'm gonna click in the top right corner where it says add. So now Ottawa is the bottom location. If I wanna move it up, I just press and hold on it with my finger and then slide up. So I'm running my finger up the screen and the the location is moving with me. So now Ottawa's at the top. So it says Ottawa, 11.52 a.m., chance of flurries, 33 degrees, and it gives me the high and low for the day. If I click on Ottawa, once again, that's pretty much the same as the old weather app. It tells me the information currently, possible flurries, the hourly forecast, and then I can scroll down and see the 10-day forecast. So if I wanna see details of today's forecast, I'm gonna click where it says hourly forecast here in the middle. And it pulls up this black box. At the top it says temperature, and then it's outlining the days of the week there and the date, and then it gives me today's weather information. And then if I scroll up a little bit, it gives me an overview of the forecast for the day. So let's say I want to see um, how much snow we're potentially gonna get for today. So about a third of the way down, it says 33 degrees and it gives that little snowflake. If you look to the right, there's a little gray bar with an arrow pointing down and something that looks like a thermometer in there. I'm gonna tap on that. So these are all the things I can now read detailed information about for today's forecast. So temperature, UV, wind, precipitation, feels like humidity, visibility, and pressure. A lot of information. So we're gonna look at precipitation. So I'm gonna click on precipitation so it says Ottawa has received zero inches of snowfall total in the last 24 hours. If I slide my finger across, it's showing me the time of day. So at 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. today, we should be getting 0 0.05 inches. And then if I keep sliding that next big white bar, it says we should get 0.15 inches of snow from 7 to 8 p.m. So I don't know if you guys can see that as I'm sliding my finger across, it's moving and just above that, it's giving me the hours of the day that I should expect that precipitation to be happening. Down underneath then it says, underneath this, this graph here that I'm able to move, it says kind of a bluish color or a greenish blue is grain, blue is sleet, purple is mixed precipitation and white is snow. So it tells you the type of precipitation we should expect. So today it's white, so it's probably gonna be snow. So there's your detailed precipitation for the day. Let's say I'm gonna click on that same gray bar in the, about a third of the way down on the right-hand side and we will look at wind. So I'm gonna click on wind. So right now we are at 14 miles per hour west-northwest with gusts of 23 miles per hour. So you can see, once again, I'm gonna slide my finger 
across the time span of the day and it's going to tell me all of the wind we can expect for the day. So this is much more detailed than what the weather app used to show. If I scroll up, it gives me the daily summary for the day and it also explains about wind speeds and gusts. So each uh, weather feature um, is going to have its own description of what, what it's telling you about. Um, so for example, if I click on where it's that same little gray bar where now it shows a wind icon and that little down arrow, we'll do humidity. So it's going to show me the humidity for today. I can scroll back and forth to see the hourly forecast, even beyond hourly. And then if I scroll up the page, it actually explains what it's talking about with relative humidity and dew point. So that's kind of cool. It teaches you, not only does it tell you what to expect, but it tells you what it means, <laughs> what to expect and what it means. So I can actually jump from day to day as well. So I've scrolled back up to the top. So we're currently looking at Monday the 13th. This is the very top of the page. Um, but let's say I wanna look at Wednesday. I'm gonna click on the W and it's gonna show me the humidity and dew point for Wednesday. So you can actually jump between days here as well. You don't have to stick to just today's forecast. So I'm gonna close out of that and I'm gonna scroll up. I'm back in Ottawa's page with their weather and I'm gonna scroll up and then I can see the 10 day forecast. So you can also, let's say I wanna see the weather for Thursday. I'm gonna click on Thursday and here it's showing me the same thing as it did for today, but now it's showing me Thursday's weather. And I can still go in and check the wind, the precipitation, the humidity, all that stuff for the future as well. So I, we can see what Thursday's gonna feel like. So it's gonna feel like 52, high of 52, low of 25. The actual we can expect is a high of 54 and a low of 33. And then it's gonna show, this guy actually, the, if you scroll up, it has a daily summary. It does actually stick a little news um, advertisement in there. And then underneath that, it says about the feels like temperature and it explains where they get that information for the feels like. So that's just a brief outline. So we're back in the general view of Ottawa. Um, so you can do that for any of your saved locations. I could click on Columbus and I would get the same amount of detail um, for their expected weather. So if, even if I'm on the page for Columbus, I can click on today and see all of those different data points for their weather. So it's pretty neat. It's like a, <clears throat> a detailed graph. Um, of different weather factors. So I just thought it was kind of neat and wanted to do a tutorial explaining to people how they can use it and, and uh, take advantage of these new features in the Apple Weather app. Okay, thank you.